Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's Tim Grage here. It's Friday um, in the city of Johannesburg. Anybody out there who is with me on this Lord's Day? Anybody, anybody here? Who am I seeing? Patronella, it's good to have you. Thank you for being with me. Who else? Mrs. Grage, welcome, welcome. I see the family is coming in. Yes, good morning, Cloudy. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Wonderful, wonderful. Yvonne, welcome. Jade, Jade Jacobs, what's up? My Jonah, how are you? Who else? Tabiso. Uh, my regards to the entire family. Uh, Cecilia, how are you? Barney, who else, who else? Who just sent me that interesting butterfly? Mbasa, thank you for the morning butterfly. Good morning, Pastor Jerry. It's good to have you. Um, uh, David, David, welcome. I'll see you soon, I'll see you soon. All right, I think we have enough people in the room. Let's, let's pray, let's pray. Everlasting Father, we thank you as again. Uh, we surgeon in your word. I ask that you will educate, inspire. You will speak a word that will stir us, speak a word that will heal us, speak a word that will transform us, speak a word that will help us, speak a word that will cause us to know you better because that's, that's, that's the core of what changes a life and a destiny. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, like I've been doing every day this week, if you are unaware, we've started a project where Every day we read a chapter in the book of John, uh, chapter one, um, and we're going all the way to chapter 21. Um, and then I come up and I do my own review of that particular chapter, okay? Uh, but the idea is you are also supposed to do yours. So you do your review, I do mine, and then we just engage together. Good morning, refill with, and we just engage together, okay? So this is these are my thoughts um on let's see if i can open this nicely these are my thoughts on john chapter 5 okay these are my thoughts uh on john chapter 5 based on my study based on my readings based on my investigations these are the things that i came across so we are on john chapter 5 i'm not going to read the whole thing for the sake of time but a few things immediately jump at me of course as you can imagine so uh let's see the healing at the pool of, of, of Bethesda. So Jesus shows up at the feast. Now we're not sure which of the feasts that it was. Um, um, because it was, it warranted being mentioned, there's a very strong possibility it was one of the three major feasts that the Jews would have. So Jesus shows up at the feast and then he sees a man. And, and well, actually, he goes to the pool of Bethesda and there are several people there. There are several people right there. And they are all sitting by the pool and they're all looking to be healed. It's interesting to observe because when we read, when we read the story, I was doing an investigation on some of the commentaries uh, concerning this particular verse. And it's interesting to observe that some of these commentaries actually do not, the, the ancient, the much older manuscripts, actually do not have um, uh, verse 3 all the way to verse 4. Verse 3, the latter part of verse 3, where it says, um, waiting for the moving of the water, and then the whole of verse 4. In some of the early manuscripts, that part is not there. Uh, but it was still included here because later the man still says, and that part was included in the older manuscripts, the man still says that he was waiting for a stirring of the water. And so since he was waiting for the stirring of the water, the, the, the compilers decided that, look, then this was probably the event. So the man is there. He's expecting to be healed. Jesus observes that he has been there for 38 years. This man was impressed me at the same time he bothered me because why did he keep on coming he kept on coming 38 years he had been impotent 38 years he had the possibility of being healed there for 38 years do you know what 38 years is i mean we're talking about 38 years um so so 365 days time, times 38 then and, and for a good portion of that he had been coming to that particular place to be healed. If this event actually used to happen, then he would have been watching other people get healed while he was not being healed, but he kept on coming. He was a, an interesting combination of hope and hopelessness 
all rolled up into one. Every day he woke up with hope, but even when he got there and, and, and was expecting to be healed, he at the back of his mind did not expect to be healed at the same time. Because remember when Jesus, look at that, when Jesus asked him, would thou be made whole in verse 6? The man says, um, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. So he knew that he had no man. But every day he kept on coming. And, and I began to postulate some thoughts. So was it religion that made him keep coming? It was religion, maybe. You know, he was just used to, where else will he go anyway? What else will he do anyway? Or can he do anyway? So he decides that he would just keep coming, you know, to that pool, even though he had no hope of being healed. Or, or was it that he just had a resilient hope? because I can't call it faith per se, a resilient hope that he woke up every morning and in spite of how long he had been in that situation, something in him said, maybe today is the day. And then he will get there, see the multitude of people, and then he will come back to reality and say, with this multitude of people here, people that can walk, uh, people that can move faster than me, maybe I, I don't have. But my lesson for that, what, what hit me was, to never lose hope. The fact that it hasn't happened yet does not mean it's not going to happen. And I say that to someone. This was an individual who for 38 years, the situation had been dire. The situation, nothing had changed. He had watched other people celebrate. He had watched other people come and go. He himself had probably rejoiced with people. I wouldn't be surprised if after a while he was no longer even rejoicing with anybody uh, because he couldn't understand why he was there. But the next day he will be back there. His resilience spoke wonders for me. God forbid that any of us will have a long-standing issue that will be there for 38 years. God forbid. I reject that for your life and mine. But his resilience is a lesson for us to learn from. This was a very committed individual. It was a very determined man. His, his commitment must... I would not be surprised if that level of commitment was something that actually pull Jesus in because there were so many other people that were sick there. Why him? You know, that has also question, I, I, you know, been a question for me. And I don't know if you have an answer you want to prefer. Why him? Yes, clearly Jesus chose him because Jesus later explains that it is what he sees his father do that he will do. So he, he saw a movement and a compassion of God towards the guy. But why that particular individual? Why not somebody else that has been there? I will not be surprised. This is my postulation that that his consistent determination, even, you know how the Bible speaking about Abraham, who, where it says against hope, believed in hope. That reminds me of this guy. It was against hope. He knew nobody's there to help me. He was fully aware of that, but he will keep on coming. Against hope, he believed in hope. I declare over your life that your faith will not fail. That was something I prayed for myself and family this morning as I read this. Your faith will not fail you. Your faith will stand, irrespective of the opposition that you have been seeing, irrespective of how the enemy has mounted up a standard against you. I declare that like this man who kept on being determined, nothing will shift your ground, nothing will push you from your level of faith. And indeed, unlike this man, your case will come to pass sooner than later. Let's push. A few other things hit me. At verse 7, the impotent man answered. Jesus now says, so, so his opportunity shows up. His opportunity was now here. And Jesus says to him, do you want to be made whole? The man's response was quite interesting. He said, the impotent man answered and said, I have no man when the water was troubled. Um, Zanele sent me this this morning as one of her takeaways from this particular verse and it blessed me mentally. I told her I was going to share it. Zanele said that this verse spoke to her because Jesus did not ask him, who do you have help to put you in the water? Jesus said, do you want to be made whole? But the man's response was, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. And Zanele said this, that it is important to have ears that hear. Oh my goodness, may we all, I feel God all of a sudden, may we all have ears that hear. The question was, will you be made whole? And his response was, I, there is no way that can happen. You say, I, I don't have help. Yes, one can understand that because he had been in that case for so long, he had become, his pain and his circumstances had stopped him from being able to even see the opportunity that was being presented to him. May we, not because, 
may we may our pain and the crisis and the chaos and whatever troubles we're going through not stop us from being able to see opportunities when they are presented to us. I declare that we have ears that hear. We will see the opportunity that is presented to us. We will recognize it. We'll be able to take advantage of it in the name of Jesus. It's a good thing that this man's case still ended well. May our case always end well. But ears that hear is a necessity for survival. His opportunity was there. And, 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 and he just couldn't see it. He couldn't even hear what was being said. Now, another thing here for me in this verse was he, he had concluded that the only way God could help him was through the pool. That was the only way. I've said this once. I will say it a thousand times. God has a variety, a myriad of ways to get the answer to you. Yours is to ask. Yours is to seek. Yours is to knock. It, the, the how belongs to him. And if he chooses to share the how with you, he will. But the how belongs to him. Yours is to obey what the word says you should do. And which is to ask. He says to everyone that asketh, he receiveth. Are you asking today? I prophesy that scripture. He says to everyone that asketh, receiveth, you receive in the name of Jesus. He says, seek to everyone that seek, you will find. I declare that even as you are seeking right now, on a 21 day prayer and fasting, as you are seeking, you will find. He says to he who knocks on the door. I love the issue of knocking. Matthew 7. He says knock on the door. The door is shut but like this man you don't walk away. You don't say oh I got here. I thought I came in early. I thought I came in before um, before the deadline but the door is closed. Let me go Let me go home and come back. No. He says when you meet a closed door you go there and you knock. I say and to anyone that knocks the door will be open unto you and I declare that that is your story. Look at that again the man the man could not see how god was going to do it and god still came through for him you will not see rain but your ground will be full of water i prophesy that over you this this is what the lord said to me this morning he said tell my children based on this verse that they will not see rain and do you know why he says rain because the man was expecting somebody to help him you might not know anybody in that company. You don't have any access. The person that you know has left or the person that you know is not willing to help you. Nobody's available to help you. You don't know any man, but you know the man. And because you know the man, because you know the man, a door is open unto you. They will give you that opportunity. They will hear you out. And when they hear you, they will listen to you and they will respond to you positively. In the name of Jesus, I declare. I see company doors opening. I declare that it is open unto you in the name of Jesus. You know no man. But yet, like it was with this man, do you know who this man, this statement of this man reminded me of? It reminded me of Mary, the mother of Jesus herself. I know not a man. You will have a child. She says, I know not a man. How can this thing be? And the Bible says, says the, the, the angel says to her the spirit of the lord will overshadow you and you shall conceive you shall be with child you know nobody but the one that you know the one that you know will respond to you and that is jesus himself he's right here right now jesus then says to him rise take up thy bed and walk the miracle worker is still in the house i speak to anyone that is sick i declare Anyone that is watching, that is experiencing the symptoms of COVID-19. Yesterday, I received news again that two of our people that, that have been experiencing the, no, that have been confirmed um, positive of COVID-19 had now been completely free of the symptoms. They are now free of the virus. I speak to everyone and anyone that is sick right now under the sound of my voice. Whether you're watching me live, whether you will eventually watch me, I prophesy over your life as Jesus said to this man, I say to you, rise, take thy bed and walk in the name of Jesus. I say rise, take your bed and walk. I speak it over you. I speak it over your family. I speak it over your children. Take your bed and walk be healed in the name of Jesus we have seen people so many different people healed while just watching this broadcast so I say to you we have had people who have watched this broadcast and they didn't watch it live and yet they got healed so I say to you whenever you are watching 
healings. You receive your healing right now in the name of Jesus. God has shown us mercy. We have had people even in our church who were so sick of the virus and we, we, we were scrambling to try and look or where to get oxygen tanks for them to use to breathe oximeters and oxygen tanks. I remember one of them said to us, that Jesus appeared to us. Oh, Jesus is still alive and he is still healing and he is still moving. She, we're trying to rent oxygen tanks. We called one of our nurses in the house. She was going, bending over backwards so that we could rent oxygen tanks for her to use she and her husband because they were running out of air. But God, but God, she, Jesus, she said, Jesus appeared to her and said to her, you will be okay. No, you will be fine. And she said all she could say to him, because she couldn't even talk, was okay. Then she called me on the phone. She could now talk. Her breathing was getting better. Now they are doing so much better. I declare, rise, take thy bed, and walk in the name of Jesus. I love verse 9. It says, and immediately come. If you are watching this with me, come on, do something with me right now. I want you to say, and immediately Come on, just write immediately, right? Just write it immediately. Agree with me and say immediately. The Bible says, and immediately the man was made whole. Somebody say immediately. Come on, come on. I'm waiting. I'm waiting to see you say immediately. I'm waiting to see you say somebody type immediately and I will go on. Immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. I declare, oh, thank you, Cecilia. I declare and immediately in your circumstance. Come on. I declare and immediately concerning your situation. I declare and immediately concerning your health. I declare and immediate turnaround concerning your finances. I declare and immediate turnaround concerning your family. I declare and immediate turnaround concerning your mind. I declare and immediate turnaround concerning your business, your career, any aspect of your life that is of import, I command and immediately to be released. I prophesy over you this morning and I declare immediately things turn around. I don't care what it is. I join my faith with yours and I say immediately you see. Immediately you get the phone call. Immediately you get the retraction if needed. Immediately you get the, the, the case thrown out of court. Immediately you get a verdict that suits you. I, I, I declare immediately immediately according to the will of God concerning your life immediately a turnaround comes and immediately remember we saw the first miracle that Jesus did and that one was a gradual miracle the Bible says the man said to, 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 to Jesus or the man said to his servants when did my son begin to amend but Jesus was not moved by that Jesus did not think why is this thing not happening immediately maybe there's something wrong with my anointing no Jesus just kept on going and guess what? Now we see immediate manifestation of glory. So the man is healed, all right? The man is healed. Let's see. Ooh, time goes when you're having fun. The man is healed and, and the, he, he picks up his bed and he begins to walk. Look at what happens. This is a man that has been sick for 38 years. He picks up his bed and he begins to walk. And the Pharisees see him. And the first thing they say to him, the Jews, verse 10, the Jews said unto him that was cured. Remember, this is the man that was cured. 38 years, they knew him. He was not an unknown face. So don't think maybe these people, um, unless they resumed work that day, which is unlikely. So they knew him. 38 years. Everybody there after 38 years, they knew him. They probably knew him by name or at least they knew they could describe him. All right. But this is what they said. The Jews said unto him that was cured, it is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for you to carry your bed. This man has just been healed. And all they could see, they didn't even ask him, what, on earth, what happened to you? All they could see is that this man, can you imagine that, was carrying his bed. My goodness, it gets worse. The man now says to them, in case they didn't know, the man now says to me, answer them, he that made me whole, the same said unto me, take your bed and walk. So he explains to them, in case maybe they didn't know he was sick. He says, I was sick. I was sick. And yet, 
uh, the, the man that made me go says, take up your bed and walk. And this was their response in verse 12. Then asked they him, what man is that which said, take up your... They ignored again the fact that he had been healed. He ignored that he had been made whole and all they could see. Take up your bed and walk. Let me say this. You need to avoid people in your life who all they see are the mistakes that you make. That is a big issue. You need, it's only, look, they, when, when, when you are celebrating, they hardly show up. The only time they show up is when there is something to complain. Do you know some of those people on Facebook, on your social media platform, you never hear from them. They never comment, they never like, they never do anything. And then one day when they don't agree with something that you've posted, that's when they come out of the woodworks. I have no tolerance for such. I immediately block those people. I delete their friend, I block them. Why? I've not seen you for so long. You've not commented. You've not said anything nice. And the first thing I'm, our interaction, we're interacting and you're saying to me is all the negatives. You need to avoid people who only see the negative in your life. If that person is your spouse, don't avoid your spouse. But maybe it is time to go for counseling. Because it is, can you imagine all they could see? This man's life, after 38 years, had just been transformed. And all they could see is, uh-uh, but why, 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 why are you doing this thing? Why, why, why are you doing that? Oh, no. Such people, may your life be free from such people. Let me mention this. Do you know, remember in Genesis, when God says to Adam um, and Eve that because they had, of what they had done, the word says that the earth will bring thorns and thistles. Thorns and thistles. Later, Paul talks about a thorn in his side. Let me help you here. When he talks about thorns and thistles, when you do what we call biblical exegesis, thorns and thistles actually means people. So basically, he was saying that you will labor, but you will have people whose ideas, ideologies, dispositions will fight against you. Do you know that's what that scripture was implying? This is why I tell people, it, when, when someone, a, a business executive flew into the country and spent a few moments with me, he said, because we, he didn't plan our interaction when he sat in my office, he said, tell me one thing that I need that could change every aspect of my life. One thing that I need, apart from, from Jesus, one thing that I need that can help me in my marriage, help me in my finances, help me. I said, what you are asking is a difficult one, but there is an answer. The answer is the right relationships. The right relationships can inspire your prayer life. The right relationship can rob you of one. The right relationship can, can spur you on in your business. The right, the wrong relationship can destroy it. The right relationship can, can bring you healing. The right, the wrong relationship can bring you death. All right? Relationships are primary. When Paul was saying a thorn in his flesh, it wasn't sickness, it wasn't disease. When you check it, you later discover that certain Jews had committed themselves that everywhere Paul will go, they will go there and they will cause a ruckus. At some point, they had even arranged and they got Paul stoned to death, if not for the intervention of heaven, and Paul came back to life. My issue, the, the point here is there are people in our lives that we need to really be careful how we relate with them. You don't need to cut them off in the sense that you are no longer nice to them, you no longer help them, but if they are not adding to your growth, and you are not adding to someone's growth because you might be cutting people off, but you are the problem of somebody else that someone is trying to cut out. So you can't afford to be. This was a problem for me. Now I'm out of time. So let me just quickly run to other things that spoke to me. I don't know what spoke to you. Maybe you can share, but let me run to other things that spoke to me. He says, afterwards, Jesus found him and Jesus you know, spoke to him, encouraged him, and the man went and reported Jesus to the Jews. Can you imagine? Somebody else that Jesus healed in the temple, right? When Jesus healed another guy in the temple, um, uh, this was a man that was born blind. When Jesus healed him and Jesus came and met him just like this guy, the, the, the man said, who is the person that did this? Tell me so I will follow him. And the man began to follow Jesus. This one, on the other hand, when he bumps into Jesus, his response was, oh, so you are the one. And he goes and he tells the Pharisees. That's, that grieved me. Do you know why it grieved me? It just gave me the impression of battered wife syndrome. Battered wife syndrome. You, you, know, you know how it is. This is killing you, 
but that death has become so familiar, so familiar that you can't walk away from it. That situation has no more benefit. It is robbing you. That habit is killing you, but you say you want to walk away, but you keep going back there. You keep going back there. Ah, if you have found yourself in that situation where you have loved your chains, instead of breaking free from your chains, you have painted your chains the color of gold and you have called them an ornament and, 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 and chains of, of, of decoration and, and an ornament to beautify yourself, may you be set free. May those chains be broken off from your life. This man went back to the same people that were totally uninterested in whether he was healed or not. You will not go back. The strength, the strength to move forward is upon you. Look, don't say, that was the word I'm looking for, and then you go and make a rash decision. Pastor Tim says, go. So you make a rash decision. Don't do that. But if this is ministering to you, then what you should do, particularly if it's, 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 a, it's a very delicate situation, the Bible says in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Get counsel. Ask for counsel. And with counsel, we will help you out. And maybe not me, but maybe your pastor, whoever else, will help you out. You will not stay in the place of affliction. Now, I want to close. Let me quickly close. There was a scripture, a statement that Jesus made here that blessed me off my, blessed me. I was in bed. I had to sit up. It says, very, very, I say unto you, I'm in verse 19. The son can do nothing of himself, but what he see the father do, for what things soever he doeth, um, he doeth, these also doeth the son likewise. The people were angry that Jesus said this. Because he suddenly called God his father. Do you know what they interpreted that as? Jesus, hey, I'm about to blow your mind and maybe it will cause you some problems. Do you know he called God his father? Let me see if I can, if I can get this to stop misbehaving. He called God his father, right? John, uh, sorry, my system is acting up. He called God his father and the interpretation was because God was his father, he had made himself equal with God. You know, and they wanted to stone him. And Jesus did not argue with them because what he was basically saying was, if God is your father, if God is his father, then he's made of the same substance of God as God. Now, in our case, we understand that he was God manifest in the flesh. Please understand, Jesus did not come to represent God. Jesus was not a representation of God. Jesus was the manifestation of God. Jesus is God made man, is God that became man, so that men can become children of God. So Jesus was not God's representation. So, so, so Jesus, when they said, calling God your father makes you equal with God. Have you noticed that God is also your father? And Jesus was the one that said it. You know, after his resurrection, they wanted to touch him. Jesus said, no, uh, told the women, don't touch me. Because I have not yet gone to my father, your father. The same Greek word. So it's not like the father he meant for himself was different from the father I meant for you. He says, I have not yet gone to my father and your father. So if God is your father, if God is your father, guess what? He has made you equal with him. See, you, 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 you are not God Almighty, but it means his nature is your nature. His life is your life. His ability is now your ability. He has given you, he has given you access to all that he is. Say it with me. God is my father. God is my father. Come on, say it with me. God is my father. God is my father. So you know that his ability, his character and his ability is in you. I call it characterability. There's no word like that, but I call it characterability. His character and his ability is in you. You can't be stranded. Today, like Jesus, 
speak. I declare that your heart will be sensitive. You know, Jesus' heart was sensitive. He could see what the Father was doing and he could respond. He could, he could discern that in this situation, God is there. God isn't here. God is moving there. And he will go there and be the representation of God there or, 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 or display God there and get the results. Get the results. God is your father. You will discern where God is. You will align with where God is. And you will manifest God. For God is your father. I'm out of time. There's so much more that I could say, right? I want to encourage you. If you can, this Sunday, I am going to be explaining quite a bit concerning who God actually is. And I'm hoping that you will join me. Our service, um, Noxie has already put the, put the link there. Our service is at 9 a.m. It will bless your socks off. Um, I will be dealing with some of the important questions. How do you trust a God? How do you say God is faithful? When at the same time, you have scriptures like, I kill and I make alive. How do you say God is faithful? And then juxtapose that against a scripture where God says, I create light and I create evil. That's what, that's what we read in Isaiah 45, for example. I create light and I create evil. How do you, how do you have this thought that God is sovereign, meaning God can do anything he likes, when he likes, however he likes, and yet you still say, you believe that, and yet you still say God is faithful. You can't say someone is faithful if you also believe that the person does anything can, because you say the person is omnipotent, omniscient, the person can do whatever he wants, whenever he wants, however he wants. You can't say that person is faithful. But yet, many of us believe that, that God can do whatever he wants, whenever he wants, however he wants. And then we wonder why we struggle to believe. Ah, on Sunday, I want to help you understand that. We, we wonder, oh, why do I struggle to believe? Because, because if, you're, if you had a staff, for example, and you said your staff was faithful, and then you, someone says, oh, how does he behave? And you say, no, he comes in whenever he likes, he does whatever he wants, he submits his, his reports whenever he feels like. The person will say, so how do you say this person is also faithful? How, how are you joining the two? But that's how many of us have believed. And then we wonder why we struggle to release our faith. I want to help you on Sunday. Join me at 9 o'clock on my YouTube page. The, the link is already on this chat. Finally, I lead prayers tonight. If you want to join me in prayers, the time is 6.30 p.m. South African time. Check the time in your time zones. If you want to join, the link to join us on, in Zoom prayers has also been put there. I hope you are blessed. Please go ahead, read your John chapter 5. So over the weekend... We will read John chapter 6, we will read John chapter 7, um, and then I will do a review of John chapter 8 on Monday, on Monday. This is the end of our devotional. I will do a review on John chapter 8. Somebody sent me a message and was saying, if we want to give to your ministry, we want to give to you, how do we do that? I'm still not comfortable putting the details here, but I am, I am chuffed that you are so blessed, some of you are so blessed, and you are looking for opportunities to actually sow into our ministry, sow into my life, it will be an honor. If you are really interested, like we've done with other people, come to my um, messenger, send me a private message, and I will send you those details. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. The Lord cause you to experience an immediately in concerning the circumstances that have prevailed in your life. I speak the mercy of God. As you end this week, I, this week, today, Friday, may you hear good news, good news that strengthens you with might by his spirit in your inner man. Angels attend your cause in the name of Jesus. I declare that you, your, your doors are opened and they are opened immediately. Doors of opportunity, doors of understanding, doors of creativity, doors of favor, uh, doors, to, doors of new contract, doors of new access, and the wisdom to maximize the moment and hear accordingly is released unto you. I declare it so in Jesus' matchless name. Amen. I need your prayers. Today is shoot day for me. 
have about four sermons that I need to churn out today on camera. Pray for me. I need grace. I really need grace. God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend ahead. All right? Go well. Bye for now.